gidilati se e bo de no office ni eni se gidilati se nbi ti ko kon ba se le si omo ba ka bi se ati awon lo pa ma ko everybody yes now eni se kobo kobo the story begins one afternoon at a mining site men smoking sweating digging looking for buried gems when we see a man driving away from the mining site happily suddenly he noticed another car chasing after him from behind oh boy Baba shifted to J71 and started running away. In fact, he had to get down from the vehicle, pick up his bag, and start running on foot. The red car stopped briefly beside him and continued on his way. The man ran until late in the night. He is extremely tired. He quickly buried the bag he was holding and then went another direction. He slipped and fell. Okay, you know what? The bag he was running with contained diamonds that were handed over to him at the mining site earlier. Now, the chase has caught up with him and yes, they shot him. Now quick question, who owns the bag? Where was he running to? And how important is it that he had to pay with his life? Follow us and let's enjoy this recap together. Quick disclaimer, this recap is for educational purposes only. Ijogbon is produced by our favorite director, Kunle Afolayan. This recap is not meant to replace the original movie, neither should it stop you from watching the full movie on Netflix. Also. This recap contains heavy spoilers. If you are just joining us, you should definitely subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification icon. Hi, this is Sam. Welcome to the Film Village Hub. Now, a few days later, after closing from school, we see these four friends, Jamu, Ronti, Obi, and Prince. Now, these four friends meet up after school. Their principal even calls one of them. He just waved at him. Look at you. School is over and you are calling me. Come on, get out. They start running. Now, while they were playing and running home, one of them almost got hit by Chief Owoni Fari's car. He shouts at them and he keeps driving. Wait, Kasali stopped Ronti to collect the money he's owing him. Pay me my money today! Pay me my money today! His phone then rings. Oh, BC, I will call you back, I will call you back. Bra Kasali, look! He turns, they tricked him and escaped. But where are these guys heading to after school? Because uh, this journey is long, you know. They kept going, they kept going. The shark kept going and going. Ah, school I. Now they got to the top of a rock. While resting, Jamie started talking about how he is so tired of that town, of the country itself, and he would love to Jakpa relocate to even the nearest Benin Republic. Ronti says after the holiday, he will be attending a seminary college at Ibadan also. Prince laughs at him for wanting to become a pastor. Now after a while, the idea of Jakpa in, that is relocating out of the country, seems nice among the four friends. Later, we see them baiting while Obi is washing her clothes. After, Jamil helped her carry the clothes. Now, while going back home, Jamil notices a tire track. Ah, uh-uh. how did the vehicle get to this high place? They begin to follow the tire tracks, carefully observing where it leads to, until Obi's leg gets caught up in a. Oh, snake, snake, snake! Brave Jamil jumps in to help her out. Oh, there's no snake. It's a handbag, a man bag. What could be in the man bag? Jamie opens it and guess what? This looks like diamonds. Ah, diamonds? Ronti suggests they go to the police or report to the king. Jamie says, no, they should be patient first. But in the meantime, their fourth friend, Prince, should not know about this because he is way younger than them and he would not understand. So we see Ronti and Jamie in a small hut discussing what to do with the diamonds when Obi enters, bringing Prince along. Now, unknown to her, the diamonds were in the open. Prince saw it. Ah, am I dreaming? Tell me this is a dream. Ronti says, mm, it's just shattered glass. Come on, Egbo. I'm not an illiterate now. With how many are there? They say 20 pieces. Jamil then remembers that there is someone they could meet about the diamonds. There is someone they can sell it to. Immediately, they took just four pieces to meet Chief Owonifari, the car dealer who almost ran them over the other day. Now. Chief Owonifari says it's a fake, just broken bottles and it's worthless. Eh, okay then, I uh, will go and sell it at Ibadan. Ah, 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 come back here, come back here. Chief wants to play a smart one on them, but these guys are smart too. They even use the small good vehicles he sells to threaten him that if he should report them to the police, they will also report him to the police too. He says, okay, okay, he will pay 50,000 naira for each of the four diamonds. 50 what? No. We want 500,000 each. And then leave my office, I beg. They were about to leave again. Okay, 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 come back, come back. Ah. 
100,000 naira for each. While they were bargaining, Chief's girlfriend kept pressing her phone and disturbing everyone with message alerts and beeps. Then Chief couldn't help it anymore. So, darling, BC, you see, I'm in a midst of. Then Ronti recalls that earlier, when Kasali stopped him to ask for his money, he was on the phone with a BC. Could it be the same BC he's seen here? Hmm, we shall see. Chief then says, these diamonds are uncut diamonds, and because they are not yet clean, he will pay only 200,000 for each of them. The guys just leave. As they open the door, they were stopped by gunmen. Chief's guys, come back here. Okay, 300,000 naira each. See, the guy says 500 are big. Ah, uh, okay, uh, which bank account should I pay to? You see, none of these children has a bank account. So they say, Chief, we want cash. Cash? Uh, yes, cash. He gave them 2 million naira in cash and they left happily. Now, some visitors arrived at the village to meet with the king. Their leader is Mr. Banjo Akiwawo. So the king asked him, Please, oh, why are you here? As they were speaking, the four friends are already at Ibadan, shopping, buying things, spending lavishly, paying in cash. Even the sellers was looking at them in surprise. Now, Mr. Banjo Akiwawo tells the king that their mission is to establish a business, an agro factory there at Oyoke. The king is happy. They've been looking for such an opportunity for their village to be developed. The chiefs also supported and welcomed them. They promised to give them any land that they need. Now, at their hideout, Jamu informs them that none of them should come alone to that hideout where the remaining 19 stones are kept. They must always come in twos or threes. He also collects Prince's phone. Ah, uh -uh, bros, don't cheat me now. Come on. If they find such an expensive phone with you, where will you say you got the money from? Oh, that's true. Jamil then tells Ronti and Obi, the older ones among them, to think straight. They shouldn't let the excitement of shopping and spending get into their head and lose focus. He then advised Ronti not to go to the seminary school since he doesn't even like it. Rather, they should all jackpot together to Canada, the land of opportunities. He asked Obi to even come with him to Canada, that they can both help a single mother. Now, at Obi's house, Obi's mother calls her. She answers, Ma! But first, she had to quickly hide her phone so the mother would not see it. So the mother asked her, hey, What is it I keep hearing about you following boys here and there? See, you are mature though, and you should be careful of where you go with them. She says she does not want any problem, oh. you will be jumping pyom 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 about. Now, at Jamu's house, Remember the principal that called Jamie earlier? He is actually his father. So Jamie arrives with groceries. Daddy, this is what I bought with the money I saved from the menial job I did with my friend Ronti. Ah, the father says, you saved this much? Hmm, intriguing. Now to Prince. Remember, Prince, yes, he is actually a real prince. While returning to the palace to meet his father, he saw the businessmen coming out. There was a brief stare between them. Wait, see this guy? His name is Kafan Chan. He is the one that shot that man earlier. So, definitely, these men are here for the diamonds, not to set up a factory. So, Prince asks the father, Daddy, who are those men? The father says, They came from Abuja to establish a company here in our town. Oh, okay. Now, at Ronti's house, his father is a reverend. While eating, he asks Ronti, Where have you been since morning? Oh, I was at the mountain top meditating. Oh, that's good. Because even in the Bible, meditation is good. But it must be coupled with serious prayer. You need it, since you will be going to the seminary college next year. The mother also relates how interesting the choir practice was that day. After the church service on Sunday, which was also attended by the king. Now, Prince informed the guys that some men have arrived at the village and they are planning to establish a factory. Ronti says he is also considering relocating with Jamil to Canada. Obi says ah, she is an only child and she cannot leave her mother by herself. Now, Kasali was at the beer parlor when a lady with about 85 kg worth of nyash walked past him. This reminded Kasali of his girlfriend, BC, and her chest. Oh, where is my BC? Suddenly, he sees Ronti and the three walking by. Hey, my money, my money! He starts chasing after them again. Now, these guys escaped. Chief Owonifari then parked behind him. I have a job for you. Looking in the vehicle, 
there is BC with her chest in all their glory. While Chief was talking to him, Kasali was busy staring at the milk factory. Chief asked him to come to see him in his office later that he has a work for him. Uh, okay, sir. As he leaves, he is clearly pissed off seeing his girl with Chief. Later, the king asked the chief to show the businessmen the stretch of the land where they want to set up their factory. So they take them to see the place. The Chinese man among them asks to see what is at the other side of the mountain. Okay, yeah, let's go and check it out. Now, guess what? Jamu is in the hut where they hide the diamond, making calls on how to relocate out of Nigeria. He was on the phone with Emeka, his agent, telling him the challenges of getting the passport, and he asked him to travel through the desert into Europe first. Oh, while Jamu is complaining that Canada is where he wants to go, not Europe, he heard a sound. He quickly looks back, asking, who is there? Who is there? Looking around, the chief and the businessmen were already outside. Now the chief says, this is far enough. The lands are all the same, so we can go back. Instead, Mr. Kiwawa says, you guys can go back. Uh, allow us to just look around the land to see if we will like it or not. Okay, Obi actually followed these Abuja men to see where they were heading to. Maybe they are going to where they kept their diamond. Unknown to her that Jamu is already in the hut. They saw each other, then they quickly leave the site. Mr. Mashola, the school's best teacher, decides that it is time to leave the school. She meets with the principal to say goodbye. Ah, uh -uh. I promise to increase your salary. She says no. She is relocating to Jamni. Eh? Jamu's ear tingled. Jamni ke. Then she leaves. Daddy, even your best teacher is leaving the country. The father says, we all have our destinies. Jamu then say, Dad, aren't you tired of poverty? Mommy died because you were too poor to continue her dialysis treatment. Your mother died because the health system is rapidly corrupt and underfunded. Besides, it's the will of Allah. Jamu says, you don't even go to mosque. And still yet, every little tin, you hang it on Allah's neck. The father got angry and then Jamu walks out. Now, at the palace, while looking in the guest room where the businessmen were accommodated, Prince found a gun in one of their bags. A gun? Then the door opens, the young boy quickly hides. As they enter, Mr. Kiwawa tells a woman on phone that they have searched the length and breadth of the land and they can't find the diamond. It seems someone in the village must have found it and kept it. The woman on phone says, in such a village with poor people, it should be easy to find such a person. Kanfanchan says, it seems someone has tampered with his bag. Someone has entered and searched his bag. Mr. Kiwawa says, then, there's a culprit in the palace. Now, in the meantime, let's dance. Die -lo! Die -lo! Now, during a night vigil at Obi's church, the three boys were waiting outside for Obi to finish dancing. In fact, they had to call her out of the place. See, Prince said he saw something at the palace. Prince began to narrate everything to them that the businessmen have guns. And the idea for another reason, no, not to establish any factory. Obi suggests they tell the police about it. Jamie says, no, remember the stones are uncut. The police will only keep it for themselves and their own efforts will be a waste. By the way, it's obvious these businessmen are thieves themselves. Anyway, we will talk about it in the morning. You can go back to the church and then wait. Here is where a big mistake happened. Jamu gives the iPhone back to Prince to keep. He says, no one should see the phone with you. Why is this a mistake? You see. So they left the place. The following day, Prince was trying to impress some girls with his new iPhone 13, even taking selfies with them when he hears behind him, hey, let me snap you. Yes, it's Kafanshan. Fear grips the prince. Uh, smile now. <laughs> even the smile was not smiling. After taking the photo and asking the girls to go, Prince started lying that uh, his father, the king, bought him the phone as a birthday gift. Mm. Kamfanchan says a birthday gift of over 500,000. <laughs> Lemao. That same day, the Chinese man goes up to the hill to Mama Obi's farm. From a distance, Jamu and Obi saw him. Quickly, he tells her not to answer him or tell them anything. The man brings out the iPhone 13. Prince has been tied up. Obi's mother asks, Obi, what's going on? She says nothing. The man then tells them not to tell anyone or else Prince will die. He returns the phone. He then tells them to bring the bag to him. The mother quickly joins them. What's going on? The man says, nothing. I just delivered a message to them from the prince. Jamu and the other two quickly rush to the hut to get the diamond. But to their surprise, the diamond is missing. Hey, 
Where did he keep it? Jamie and Roti begins to fight. Where could it be now? They split themselves into three to look for it. Jamie says Obi should go to the stream that he will look for it again at that place and Roti should go search his house. My house. Are you mad? They started to fight again. Now, Obi got to the stream while looking for the bag and the diamond. She even got into a fight with another girl, Latifat, because the girl insulted her late father and insulted her for following boys around. Everybody is just frustrated. Even Ranti, the seminarian in making, out of frustration, yells at his father that he is not going to any seminary college at Berk, that he doesn't want that. Then he leaves the house. When he gets to the market, Ranti sees Kasali carrying a bag about to board a bike. Wait, eh, let me give you your money. I, I don't need this, I don't need this. Kasali is in a hurry. He then drags the bag with him. And guess what? Jamil's phone, which he keeps in the bag, falls from Kasali's hand. Now, remember that day Jamil was on the phone with a maker talking about his travel plans? Remember, he heard a noise. Yes, it was Kasali following him. After he left with Obi because the chiefs were around there, Kasali entered and packed everything, including the diamond and Jamil's phone. That was the job Chief Owonifari asked him to come do for him. Okay. Now the four of them head to Chief Owonifari. Chief says, how do I know where Kasali is? He doesn't work for me. See, you guys should leave my office. Ronti then remembers that. Wait, do you know that the name Ronti actually means remember in Yoruba? Well, now you know. Anyway, let's continue. Ronti then recalls that Kasali is also dating BC. Good. He says, see, let's leave the chief alone, please. There is this lady Kasali is dating. Uh, her name is um, um, BC or something. If we find BC, we will find Kasali. Uh, uh, uh. What is this guy saying? Which BC? My BC or what? Chief was just looking at them. Now, he intentionally said this in presence of Chief. The reason is that if Chief hears that Kasali is sleeping with his girlfriend, this will trigger him, make him angry and goes to find Kasali. Then they can secretly follow the chief and see where Kasali is also. Now Jamie asks them to follow chief while he will go and delay the kidnappers not to kill Prince. Jamie then calls them that he is coming with the diamond. Now as expected, the chief quickly jumps in his car to go and find his girlfriend, BC. Mr. Kiwawa directs Jamie to the location where the prince is kept. Jamie asks to speak with the prince to confirm if he is still alive. He did but then was warned never to play any trick. Remember Chidera, the woman on phone with them earlier? She had to come find her diamond by herself. In fact, the diamond they sold for 500k each is actually worth 10 times the amount. One diamond is actually 5 million naira. Kafanchan even cuts the prince bead thinking it's a charm or something. Now, Chief arrives at Kasali's house with Ronti and Obi following him from behind. Ronti says, if they had returned the diamond to the police as he suggests earlier now, they won't be in this mess. Obi says she is also not happy about Jamu, so desperate about traveling through the desert. Mm. So you, all this while, you still like Jamu. Ronti then tells Obi that he also loves her. Now, Obi is torn between two lovers on the jukebox. Hey, sorry, let's continue. Now, Chief barge into Kasali's room. He? These two obviously just finished digging for diamonds, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean? Kasali, Kasali, I ask you to collect stones from these kids, and here you are collecting my woman. Kasali pushes him away. Look at you. Who is your woman? <laughs> See, eh? I've been busy, busy, in busy before you met busy. She is my busy. I am only pimping her out to you. In anger, Chief brings out a gun and. <laughs> He kills Kasali. He then collects the diamond from BC. Obi runs back to tell Ronti that Chief has collected the diamond. What should we do? Obi then picks up the pan, runs back inside the house. Chief, in anger, then shoots BC. While stepping out of the room, Obi hits him the pan on his head. Baba faints. They quickly pick the bag and gun and they fled. The Chinese man then calls Chidera aside. He told her that. He heard from a young child about a legend that in that town, in the olden days, a man called Oromiyo had hidden diamond in that village. Perhaps they could try to get that diamond instead. Chidera says no, she is only after her own diamonds. Chinese man says her diamonds are small compared to what they can find in that forest. The chief gets up, picks a bigger gun, gets into the car, calls his gun to meet him. Now, Jamie's father and Obi's mother were already worried. They come to the palace to see if their children are there. They've not seen them since morning. 
The king says no, that he also thought the prince is with their kids. Ah, Hobby's mother says, for the Chinese man came to meet them earlier at the farm that the prince sent him to them. The king says, Abba, the foreigners have left for Abuja since morning now. By the way, what power does the little prince have to send the Chinese man on an errand? The king quickly calls for his chief to quickly reach out to the local security man Amotekun and start a search. Jamio arrives at the location they ask him to go to. Now he has a bag with him. Obviously not the bag that has the diamond in them. Isha carried it on his head. Kafanchan approaches him with a gun, asks him to put the bag on the ground. Jamio insists on seeing the prince first. Come on, put it down and open it. He did and then gives Kafanchan the small bag where the diamond should be. Are you sure these are the diamonds? Yes. He opens it, pours the content on his palm and it's a scorpion. He got stung while Jamil takes off. Kafanchan begins to shoot at him, chasing him until Jamil falls into a small pit where the corpse of that man is. Kafanchan says Jamil is now useless to him and as he tries to shoot him, we hear <laughs> Obi shoots him with the chief's gun, aiming at his buttocks. They drag him as an hostage and then take him to meet the others. Then the standoff begins. My diamonds! No, our friends first. Give me the diamond or I kill your friend. If you kill our friend, we will kill your friend too. Mr. Kiwawa kills Kapanchan instead. Now, while running in the forest, Chief Owunifari caught Obi. The Reverend arrives at the palace, also looking for his son. The tension is now increasing. The chief arrives with the Amotekun security officer. Ronti's mother says, ah, let us women go to the church while the men go out to search. Eh? I beg, Obi's mother says, all of us are joining in the search, I beg. At gunpoint, Ronti wants to tell them where the diamonds are, but Jamu kept telling him to keep quiet, keep quiet. Akiwawa gets impatient and was about to shoot when all of them were shot and killed by the chief and his thugs. Chief now asked, where are my stones? Hey, Wahala. The children then takes the chief to an open space where they bury the stone. They start looking for it. The furious chief is now more threatening than before. In fact, he vows to bury all of them alive if they fail to bring the diamond out. The search team arrives and found the men dead. Eh? The chief says he knows them. They are the men from Abuja. Wait, oh, but there is one of them missing. Which one? The Chinese man is gone. Now, because these children were wasting time, to punish them, the chief shoots the prince. Hey! Quickly, they give him the bagel. Now, to further punish them, he orders his dog to kill all of them. Then, they were shot. By who? The missing Chinese man. Ah. Oga, wait. Um, um, I know uh, as Chinese man, you like business. Um, Diamond, me, you, share equally. Chinese man says, no, I don't like your deal. He kills the chief and then takes the children away. The search team arrives, finding the chief corpse. While wondering what is going on, the reverend's phone rings. It's his wife. She says, ah, they have all been found and the prince has even been shot, but they have taken him to the hospital. Wait, where are they? Everybody, let's head to the police station for the interrogation. Now, these children told the police officers that those men are human traffickers. They deceived that Chinese man. They brought him to Nigeria only to scam him. Wait, you know what? The truth is that that night, the Chinese man had Chinese charms on, aka bulletproof. That was why he did not die when Chief Owonifari shot him. He says he did not come all the way from China to die in Nigeria because of these few diamonds. And for the Chinese man to save himself from being part of the human trafficking ring, he made a deal with the children. He gave them all the diamonds and ask them to lie that he is the one that actually rescued them from Kafanchan and the other human traffickers. This is the reason why the children told the police a totally different story as to what truly happened in the forest. This man, a big scammer. His reward now is that he will be given a permit by the king and the government to mine for natural resources in that land because he saved the king's son. The police had to let the children and the Chinese man go scot free. The children then went to the hospital to meet the prince, their friend, who is yet to wake up from the gunshot wound. Now, after leaving the hospital, Jamu, Ronti, and Obi get into a fight as to who should hold the diamonds. Now, for you to understand the ending of this movie, 
let us go back to the very beginning. There is a tale by moonlight being told in that village about how Oromiyo, a Yoruba deity, founded that land with treasures. But because the treasure in that land brings out greed and selfishness in men, making brothers fight brothers, Oromiyo hid the treasure beneath the earth. Now, that same story is repeating itself again. Ronti says he wants his own share of the diamond. Jamu says no, he won't give him. Obi says, give him his share now. Jamu insists that if anyone should find that diamond with Ronti, where will he say he got them from? Ronti says, Jamu is only being greedy. Even at gunpoint, when they were about to kill him, Jamu still refused to tell those men the location of the diamond. Jamu doesn't care about anyone else but himself. Ronti said a lot and this led to a serious fight. They even pushed Obi to the ground. This pained Obi seriously. Remember the decision Oromiyo came to to save his land by hiding the diamond in the earth? Obi had to make that same difficult decision. She took the diamonds and threw them in the river. All gone. At least to save their friendship and their life, which is worth more than diamonds. Now the movie ends. This is a vital lesson. Those 19 stones, with each one priced at 5 million naira, making all 19 to be 95 million naira is not enough to die for. Or is it? What do you think? Can you die for 95 million naira? Let me hear you in the comment section. Thanks for watching guys. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, I am Sam. And this is the Film Village Hub.